let's have a look at this precise example. Now, um, just to pedal back one step, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that even though when it comes to differentiation, um, we've got this, this general purpose quotient rule. Any quotient you get handed, you can differentiate it. Um, but it turns out you can't, you can't just do that for integration. And um, the counter example I gave you was if I took this same function here, x squared, and we, we, we did something like this um, earlier this morning. And if I asked you to integrate this, um, you're pretty stuck. You're in some serious trouble, um, at least with the techniques that we have within the scope of our course. Whereas this guy over here, even though it's not much different, we, we can. So let's, let's have a look at how to unpack this particular example. Um, we will we'll forget about this one and we'll just have a go at this one. Okay. Now something you said before was very per per perceptive, right? Which is that the numerator there, <laughs> you're fine. Um, the numerator there, it's, it's very close to the derivative of the denominator. That's a good thing. Um, if you think back to, um, do you have your reference sheet somewhere nearby? If you don't, it's okay, because I'll pull one up. Um, I'm just pointing that out because um, you, it'll, it'll help you in the future, like to be able to say, oh, okay, um, I don't need to remember all this stuff. It's, it's given to me. So the example I'm looking for the is, log. yeah, yeah. Well, it ends up with a log. So here it is on the, um, can you see it there on the right hand side, right at the top there, right? So if you've got, this is, I guess it looks like a quotient. The diff of the top. Yeah, exactly. So the derivative of the, of the bottom is the top, okay? So we almost have something like this. So let's, let's try and do that, okay? Uh, I'm gonna pick back up over here, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do is, as I'm integrating, the numerator, the x and the negative one, I'm actually gonna treat them as completely separate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write x over on the left-hand side on x squared. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to take away 1 on x squared, x squared like so. Is that so okay? You have, you have the diff on the left. Mm. Um, more or less, right? Now the derivative of um, x squared is 2x, so I would need 2x on the top. But in fact, in this case, you can probably see, if I pop some brackets around here, um, you can even go one better than that because x over x squared, you can just do some cancelling. Right? You've got a common factor on the top and the bottom. So in fact, this really is um, 1 over x at the front. Minus. Okay. okay. Minus uh, 1 over x squared with respect to x. Okay. So um, 1 over x, that's like the, the most simple version of f dash on f that you can think of. So what would the integral of just that part be? The oh. integral of 1 over x. Uh, I forgot. Oh. That's going to be, it's, you can even see here, right? Just log, right? uh, it's just log, yeah, exactly. Um, it's log of the absolute value of x, like it, so. It clashed with that formula. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's, um, well, you've got, there's so many different formulas that you've got swimming around in your brain yeah. at the same time. So um, that's the first term. So I'll, in fact, what I'll do is just to make it a little more obvious. So this guy turns into this one. Right. Okay. So now when we have got this guy, um, it actually might have, I should have done this earlier, but I should have rewritten this in with a negative index. So it's actually minus x to the minus two because this doesn't end up as a log. I can think about this guy as just, as a, just as a regular polynomial um, and do that thing with increasing the power, divide by the new power. So help, help me to do that. Um, what I've got here is a minus sign. That's, that's come from here, yep, right? Would be minus x over minus three the, wait, no, sorry, mm. minus x to the power of negative 3. Ah, now, it's, let, let me just write that. I'm just going to write it in a different color because... Get roasted. No, no, this is important, <laughs> right? Because this is what our brain does all the time, and it's really dicey, right? You have, you have um, uh, seen negative 2, and you're like, 2 goes up to 3, right? Because you're increasing, integrals increase powers. I but, but you differentiate it because in yeah, fact, yeah, yeah. because in fact we want negative, negative, uh, negative two plus one, which is, one. Which is x negative to the negative one, one. Yeah. exactly. So, um, and that's a very, very, it's like, we see it all the time, okay? So that, now this is correct, so let's make it the right color. Um, so it's x to the negative one, my new power, mm -hmm. I need to divide by that, so, so, negative so one. divide by negative one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I add my constant, I just gave you an indefinite integral, um, so therefore we have a constant integration. At this point, um, I just need to tidy up, it's a bit of a garbled mess, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got my natural log over here. It just be positive, right? Uh, yeah, positive. so this, this negative and this negative, they're going to cancel, yeah. okay, which is great. So I'll get plus x to the negative 1, 
and my constant's still there. And then I'm like, well, I introduced these negative indices um, to make it easier to integrate, but I'm done with the integration now. So I'm gonna get rid of those negative indices that I introduced. So that log is there and I'll write that as one over x. x. Plus a constant. Which is, is there, um, is there, so you know how you got us to a second differ differential? Oh, you mean a second derivative? Yes. That kind of thing, yep. So um, if I were to differentiate this, and to firstly. Integrate this a second time. Ah, so ah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. So um, let's just suppose um, this guy in here, this uh, we call the integrant, right? Mm -hmm. Suppose, um, well, that's a good question. Would it be a hyperbola? Um, it would certainly look like a hyperbola. Um, the things you get when you divide one thing by another, um, they, they share a lot of qualities with what we call the hyperbola. So um, the shape you met back in year 10 that looked like this. The classic one. Yeah, the classic one, right? Um, it actually has a special name. It's called the rectangular hyperbola okay. for... Um, for long reasons that I won't bother with you, you with right now. Actually, you know what? I, I will tell you, um, a hyperbola, right? Because we've got some time. A hyperbola is special because of its asymptotes, right? right. So asymptotes. it's got two asymptotes. In this case, the, the classic one, right? And in this case, um, the asymptotes happen to be the axes as well, right? Now, what I want you to notice is these axes are at right angles um, because the axes are at right angles, okay? Now it turns out that you can have other kinds of hyperbola where the asymptotes are not at right angles. They may be like kind of skewed in different ways, right. like that. Okay. So I could draw a weird looking one like, oh, I'll just draw you one right now. Um, let's put axes, axes. I could draw you one where one looks like that. That's one asymptote. And then I'm gonna draw, draw the other asymptote like this, okay? Now you could get, this guy here, this is another kind of function, okay? Um, it's still a kind of hyperbola, but I want you to notice, see those asymptotes, right? They're no longer perpendicular to There's each other. The yeah, that's right. So this guy here, it's off, yeah, it's, it's what we call oblique, right? It's off at a funny angle, um, which means that, see, this angle in here is no longer 90 degrees, okay? So therefore, um, these guys up here, we call them rectangular hyperbola because right, um, right angle, the, in, in Latin, um, right angle, the word is just rect angle. Like that rect just means right. Oh That's why a rectangle is a right angle shape. Yeah, just cool. brain exploded. I knew there was something worth going into that yeah. um, rabbit hole, so I led you down there. Anyway, all that just to say, see this guy up here, the one we're actually interested in? Um, it'll have asymptotes and stuff, but it probably won't be this classic rectangular hyperbola, okay? Now, you were suggesting, oh, if this guy was a, a you know a second derivative, so we've integrated once, mm -hmm. that tells us that this guy here would be the first derivative, okay? Because we went from second derivative, we've integrated up to the first derivative. Could we have started with the third one and then went up to the second one? Yeah, you could start at whichever one you want. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem with going up another step here is because of this guy here. Because of this oh, constant, right, yeah. right? So this constant mucks about with things and it will change what you get on the next step, right? So that's why, you know, to if we were asked to go further, they would need to provide us with extra information so we could find out what that plus C is actually equal to. And then, I mean, you can, but it just gets messier and messier and confusing. Right. And, and you're like, well, I don't really know what to, I have lots of unknown constants just kind of flying around. Mm -hmm. So in reality, when you get given a situation like this, they'll provide more information. So you can work out what the plus C is, and then if necessary, you integrate again. Right. It's okay. just because I saw the one over X, and I was like, wait, that's another log. Yeah, 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 that's exactly right. If I were to integrate this guy, um, you get log, log X. However, within the scope of the course, you don't need to integrate this. Um, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to worry about, about that guy, but um, yeah, you could if you wanted to dive down that rabbit hole. So all of that is really just a summary of saying, when you get, um, you know, you were saying, I'm having issues with integrating stuff that looks like quotients like this, right? Um, what, my, what I'll do is, you can do the same. We'll look up some other examples of this. Generally speaking, the key will be, um, one of the two things that we did here, right? Either it turns into a log of some kind, right? Um, or it's actually, whoopsie daisy, it's actually just um, requiring some algebra to show that it doesn't turn into a log at all. You can see when we integrated that right-hand guy, it just turned into um, 
it turned into this, yeah. right? It's just um, based on this power here, so if you had a look here. Yeah, you have to play with the exponents, that's exactly right. Um, and sometimes you have to separate it, to, like we did just in this example, to show how you can do that. Okay. okay.